Hello again. In this video, we're going to learn how to use some filtering algorithms from the Weka API. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to filter attributes, but you can also use algorithms for filtering instances. We'll have a quick look at the documentation. As you can see here on the list of packages, we have Weka.filters, Weka.filters.supervised.attribute. So some algorithms for uh, filtering attributes, supervised algorithms, and some supervised algorithms for uh, supervi supervised learning algorithms for uh, filtering instances, unsupervised learning algorithms for um, removing attributes and for removing instances as well. I mean, you can click on any of them and see a list of uh, uh, the classes and the filters that it actually contains. The smart one is quite nice. You can read about it, create a bit of documentation, Resample. This is for resampling. So resamples a data set by applying uh, this algorithm. But the one we're interested in is Weka.filters. We'll do some attribute filtering. So we'll go to class uh, uh, remove, as you can see here. And what we're going to do is just a simple uh, filter. It removes a range of attributes. So it removes one or more more attributes from the data set. Remember, we can actually do this even from the instances class if we want but we'll do it using the filter that's more uh, 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 that's tidier and better in terms of using the algorithms anyway so the way we do it is we create a an object of type remove and then we pass it options minus r i'll show you how to pass options so you learn more than one thing at the same time minus r and then the list of indices of the attributes that we want to remove so specify a list of columns to delete or we can use the minus v to invert the matching sense. What that means is, we will only that if we use the minus v, we tell it to keep though keep only keep those columns rather than uh, remove them. So let's go to the code and create a new class inside our Weka.API package. I don't like the name actually Weka.API. Maybe you can use Weka.test.API maybe to avoid any confusion. So let's go and create new class as usual. We give the class a name. We'll name it maybe uh, attribute filter. Why is it complaining? Already exists. Oh, I've actually created it before, so let's go to it quickly. Double click on it. Yes, I've done it before. So we'll just paste the code here. And now what I've done here, I've actually added some comments. So what we do here is as, as follows. Uh, um, yeah, I've remembered something I need to actually uh, tell you about, but I'll tell you about it in a minute. So what we do is we uh, um, import the required classes. So notice here we were in the instances, the RF saver because we remove um, attribute and then save it, save the file to a new file, uh, data source to load the data set, filter and worker dot filter dot unsupervised attribute dot remove. So what we do is we load the data set, we'll pass it a data set, the one maybe we used last time. And then we use a simple filter here. This is how we set the options. So options usually are, are passed as um, a string array. So we create a new string array. The first element is like uh, like 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 a tuple or two elements, like a pair of values. So the first element is the option. The second element is the value. So minus r, and then we need to give it the list of attributes that we want to remove. Maybe let's remove the first one. Maybe let's remove the first attribute. And then we create the remove object from the class remove, or from the remove filter. And then we set the options. So this is how we set the options. We use the method set options, and then we pass it that array of strings. And then we use the method set input format to set the data set. And then we just apply the filter. So instances new data filter dot use filter, and then we pass it the data set and the remove that returns a new data set without the columns that we or the or the attributes that we wanted to remove and then we save it regarding saving the data set you notice here last time we learned how to convert csv to rf note that this line is unnecessary so you can remove this line i'm sorry that was a mistake so you can you remove this line that's not needed we just need we need to set instances set the file using a file object with a full path and then write batch same thing here Let's actually use the same data set we used before. So it's still on my desktop. Hopefully, I'll, hopefully I've not removed it. So let me copy the full path. This QDB we uh, 
played with last time so let's load it remove the first attribute as I've been explaining and then save it maybe to let's say QDB1 save and then run and it has run successfully so what I can do now is for example I can use my terminal and then show you uh, I go to my desktop let's do QDB dot R and you can see I've removed the compound ID because as I told you before it's an ID so uh, it's not necessary for it to be there Oh, 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 actually, the uh, the indices are zero based. Uh, the index are uh, yeah zero based. So we've actually removed the this 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 uh, uh, um, attribute rather than the first. Anyway, let's view the new version now. And as you can see, um, we have. Let's have a look here. Why is it not working? Why has it not removed the actual? Um, yeah when we remove when we save we need to save new data rather than yeah that's a nice yeah little typo there so we need to save the new data the one where the attribute has been removed so let's save and run again yep and now if we view this then it's without the id i hope that makes sense i hope the idea is clear again the code is there for you to download you can find the link underneath this video and what i wanted to do is be sure and be familiar with the algorithm that you want to use and then you can use it the way i showed you i hope now we've learned at least how to create a filter and use it and how to set the options this idea of pair so the option name and then the value it actually requires this is only one option maybe next time i can show you how to set up more than one option maybe you can use the minus v uh, uh, filter which inverts the uh, uh, selections Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.